Are you ready to kick your outdated history book to the curb, but not sure how to construct a course without one? Watch this video and learn how you can ditch your textbook for good while still fostering the thinking skills your students are expected to have. And the best part, it's actually less work for you. For the best insight, support, and strategies for teaching social studies, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when a new video drops every Sunday. Are you still using a textbook because you're not entirely sure how to supplement your direct instruction? Or maybe you feel that your students will miss out on the learning opportunities that reading provides. By the end of this video, you'll have three alternatives for teaching via textbook that will not only enhance your students' comprehension and critical thinking, but help you work less facilitate more and create seamless engagement for your class. If you're new to this channel, hi, I'm Cecilia Tamez and I've been an educator for over a decade. And for the past five years, I've helped fellow history teachers by offering resources, support, and solutions to help them be effective educators and avoid teacher burnout. If you are a new history teacher that could benefit from the insight and the support of a helpful and nurturing teacher community, I invite you to click the link below and join my free Facebook group, The History Teachers Lounge. Now, as a disclaimer, because I know there are some teachers that are hardcore traditionalists and that insist that textbooks are a main source of teaching students reading comprehension and also that every student should have a basic knowledge about how to read and utilize a textbook, I want you to keep a couple of things in mind. Now, just as a side note, we're not discarding textbooks altogether depending on their content, depending on how recent they are, depending on what perspectives or points of view are presented. What this video is about is more of expanding the tools that we use to teach what many assume textbooks alone can teach us. Unless you're in a very well-off school district, most of our textbooks are a decade old or more. So they're not even getting a recent interpretation of history. Plus, if you have had any type of training in historiography or you have carefully looked at your textbooks, you know and understand that textbooks as they stand provide an extremely narrow historical perspective of the events that have transpired throughout history. And if we're trying to evolve to be more conscientious about who writes our, our history books, we wanna make sure that we allow resources and we use resources that actually have a multi-dimensional historical perspective um, so that we can create a narrative that is a lot more accurate and inclusive. Aside from this, most of our texts are not conducive to that reading comprehension that you know some folks agree textbooks provide, specifically because even if the textbooks are on grade level, our students are not always reading on grade level. And therefore, it's uh, kind of pointless to use a textbook that is not even cognitively attainable to our kids to try to teach them reading comprehension. Like, you're gonna lose them. Finally, I don't know about you, but in my experience going to school, cracking open a history book was just not compelling reading. This is not, it just is not written with students in mind. One of my favorite ways to supplement textbooks in my class is through reenactments or skits, which my students absolutely love and yours will too. So this is how you make it work. You can prepare your students by either having pre-made scripts or you can challenge your students to think at a higher level by having them create the scripts in collaboration with their peers, maybe via slides, some sort of collaborative slide that they can all share, or you can actually narrate the historical events using the content vocabulary, using the information that you would have found in the textbook and have them reenact this content as you actually retell this story. And the reason why this is so effective is because students are not passive listeners. They actually have to think about what you're saying and understand the content vocabulary in order to know how to apply it and reenact this for their peers. Now there's a couple of things and benefits to using reenactments or skits and maybe this will help you determine if this is right for your particular student. Reenactments or skits are a great way to practice basic recall 
or even something a little bit more advanced like summarizing important information, um, gathering important details, learning content vocabulary, so, or just having a basic understanding or a context for what's going on in a historical event. I highly recommend you actually try these reenactment or skit ideas. My second suggestion for supplementing or completely replacing your textbook is game-based learning or project-based learning. This is a great idea for more advanced students and that may not need that much guidance. And this particular style of teaching the content really allows you to facilitate and give students an opportunity to kind of put the puzzle pieces together. Remember, you would be guiding how the pieces come together, but you would allow students to reach their own conclusions if they're doing a project-based learning, or you would allow them to actually apply the content knowledge if you're doing a game-based learning activity where they can use the content they've learned to challenge fellow peers with questions that they themselves create. The more you're able to step back to be a facilitator, the better. Now we have to remember, facilitator does not mean that I just assign the project and the students are on their own. That means you are merely the tour guide in the museum, but the students are the ones who are starting to put these puzzle pieces together and you are just merely guiding their thinking. So far, what's your biggest gripe about your textbook? Comment below and let me know. A third effective alternative to using the textbook for instruction would be historic storytelling or and historic film. Now, one of the reasons why this particular activity is just very effective is simply because it provides students the opportunity to think at a higher level. It's kind of like when you're watching a mystery movie and you're trying to piece the story together, it allows students to actively engage in what you are telling the class or what, what story the students are hearing or watching if it's a historic film. Also, it's a great activity for when you want to do something like compare and contrast, cause and effect. So if you are practicing skills um, that deal with comprehension, that deal with uh, historical significance of a specific event, this would be a great alternative versus using the textbook to have students practice those skills because they're seeing it unfold before them, right? You're telling them the story and they're piecing together what'll be the cause and the effect of this event. Now, if you're interested in applying historic storytelling to your instruction, I'll go ahead and link one of my videos about how to use the strategy in your direct instruction and I'll go ahead and link it up above and down below so you can watch it after you're done watching this video. Aside from this, if you watch that video, you'll see that one of the greatest ways that we can create instantaneous relevance, historic relevance for our students is by appealing to their emotion, right? So if they're hearing stories about a historical event and they hear a situation, a feeling, anything that deals with the senses that they can relate to, they will create an immediate relevance to. Anything that we can visualize in our mind's eye will stick with our students. And if that content sticks with our students, then they'll be able to level up to more advanced questions. So historic storytelling is also great for scaffolding our students to think at a higher level. Now, in order to make sure that your activities are successful, there are a couple things that you wanna make sure that you have prepared or that you keep in mind. First thing is you wanna make sure that students know the learning outcome. What are they supposed to learn from this activity, this game, this project, this exercise? Because if they don't have a learning outcome in mind, then they might remember the activity or they'll think that your game was super fun, but they won't connect it to the content that you were trying to teach in the first place. The other thing is you wanna make sure that when applicable, you provide a rubric or some sort of guide of what feedback they'll be getting from this exercise or what they'll need to know or how they'll be assessed if that is something that correlates to your lesson. Now, I know that project-based learning is sometimes a little bit intimidating, but it doesn't have to be this way if you plan intentionally so that you know how the pieces need to fall together so that your students can reach, you know, the different conclusions that they need to be reaching or learning from this exercise. And finally, because it's worth mentioning, you wanna make sure that you have behavioral, 
and procedural expectations for your students for each of these three activities. If you found this video helpful, allow me to recommend Ditch Boring Lectures for Good, and I'll go ahead and link that up above and down below, as well as my video on the roadmap for how students learn, and I'll link that above and down below as well. Don't forget that my virtual door is always open and available to you at Teach Like an Influencer, linked down below, where you can check out personalized solutions and support that I offer. Don't forget, I'm rooting for you. You're an amazing teacher, and I hope you have an amazing day. Until next time, class dismissed.